When we look at your bone marrow under the microscope, we look at the number of these blast cells or the immature cells. If it's above 5%, uh, then we know that's abnormal, but we don't call it acute leukemia until it's above 20%. The group between 5 and 20 uh, is a group we call myelodysplastic syndromes or pre-leukemias, and we won't talk very much about that today. But if you have over 20%, you have acute leukemia. So you have A blank L. We need to know the middle initial. We need to know it's acute lymphocytic leukemia, which is more common in children, or is it acute myeloid leukemia, which is much more common in adults. It's making up about 80% of adult acute leukemias. And we do that by some special testing, something called immunophenotyping or flu flow cytometry, looking at markers on the surface of cells. We can do some special stains and look at it under a microscope, but we can usually determine that within a couple of days of your uh, diagnostic bone marrow. Other things that we do at the time of your diagnosis, and even though they're not necessary to confirm your diagnosis, they're very important in your long-term outlook or prognosis, and that is through chromosomes or genetics on your leukemia cells. We will send those off, and it may take a week or two to get us back. It doesn't directly impact how we treat you initially, but it will have an impact on how we treat you with your follow-up treatments and how we follow you over time. Also, there are a group of molecular studies, and I won't go into naming those. It's a group of initials, largely. There's no formal name for those, but many of those actually now impact prognosis. And what we've done between the genetics and the molecular markers, if we've started to be able to individualize treatment for people with acute myeloid leukemia, we have a number of clinical trials now that are based on what molecular markers someone has. So we may delay your treatment for a couple of days to get those markers back to determine if you might benefit from additional treatment beyond the standard treatments. And hopefully, as we go forward into the future, we'll be able to individualize, individualize treatment more and more by choosing drugs that are most effective against your disease and also hopefully avoiding toxicity of drugs that might not be effective. So it's just as important to choose drugs that might not be effective as it are, is to choose those that will work best for you.